What's going on guys? It's Dave from Otaku and today we're going to talk a little bit about how I've been sentence mining uh, with Morphman and with Frequency List. Cool. Alright guys, what's going on? Um, so, before anything I just want to say real quick, um, this video is for somebody who already has Morphman installed. I'm not going to go into details about that at all. Um, it's also uh, for somebody who probably has already watched my Netflix Frequency List. Uh, video that I made. If you haven't um, installed Morphman, then go ahead and check out the first link in the description. And if you haven't checked out that video, um, I would suggest that too. Go ahead and check out the second link. And uh, yeah, so anyways, let's go ahead and talk about this real quick. So um, you can, if you've studied the Tango decks or you studied the Core decks um, for Anki um, or whatever, or you're real brave and you want to jump right into sentence mining right off the gate, right? Like maybe you read a little bit of Take Him and you're like, yeah, sentence mining. That shit's for me. Cool, that's awesome, um, and there's a lot of great ways to go about this, but what I don't necessarily suggest is just jumping out there in the wild and just start picking out random sentences. While that can be useful, and you're going to go ahead and grab like I plus one sentences and stuff, um, there might be a better way to go about it, and there's a bunch of us who have recently been working on a concept between using Morphman and using priority lists uh, with Anki and like with a large sentence bank so that you can kind of like find sentences that are both I plus one and useful, right? Because when you're doing I plus one mining, there's nothing to say that you don't know every single word in a sentence excluding one word, and that word might be entomology, right? And you know 2,000 Japanese words or less, right? And entomology probably isn't like an important word for you. Maybe it is, but who knows, right? So I just wanted to go into it real quick um, and talk about this. So yeah, um, you can use a priority list from any show that you like. <clears throat> You can uh, use the Netflix frequency list that I made, um, or you could use a frequency list that you made yourself, right? And you combine it with uh, a spreadsheet that um, another Anki user, Japanese learner uh, named No Kampo, or at least that's his username, uh, made. And um, you can go ahead and build really, really great priority lists for Morphman. So why don't we go ahead and get into that a little bit here, and I'll show you what I've been doing. Cool. All right, guys, so welcome to my desktop again. Um, so as you see, I got my Anki right here, right? Um, I got Morph Band loaded all up. It's saying I have, you know, 4,600 morphs, known morphs. Um, and then if you go over here, uh, you have this spreadsheet. And this is the spreadsheet that No Compo made. And I'm just gonna go over it real quick. Um, so if you look in the description, I've already provided a link to a copy of this. It doesn't really contain as much as this one does because it's my own personal one, the one that I've been using. Um, but basically what you can see is like right here, it's got my Netflix stats. Um, it says out of all the morphs that I know, and the morphs here aren't going to be lined up perfectly with the morphs with Morphman, just because it, um, this is a spreadsheet and it's not going to really parse anything. It's just going to compare, you know, lines to lines. That's it, right? But this is a really, really well designed spreadsheet. So basically just to show you what this is, is what you do is you go to Morphman, right? Um, you go over here to your tools, you go over to database manager, uh, you go browse for database A, and then you load up your known morphs, right? And that's going to give you a list. Go one column, makes it a lot easier and then you want to see all A. This is going to give you a list of all your known morphs, right? So I have my 4,600 morphs that I know, um, and all I would do is click in here, Control A, Control C, copy all of that, and bring it over here, and then paste it into this column, right? And this is going to give me, um, or let the spreadsheet know how many words I know, and then it's going to take those words that I know, and it's going to compare them against um, frequency lists from different sources, right? So here's Netflix, uh, Death Note. I personally loaded in like the first 15 or 15 episodes of One Piece. I also loaded up Toradora, Kimi no Nawa, the book, um, and then One Piece, um, a series as a whole, the first season of Boku no Hero, um, Umarachan, and then Umarachan episode one. Right, and I'm not gonna go too too far into it um, further than that because the biggest thing that you can do is just play around with this. And um, you know, if you're in either Nuke Marines Discord or if you're Matt versus Japan Discord, you can maybe ask questions there. Um, but to run over what this says really quick, basically it's saying this is the total number of morphs, the total number of in instances of those morphs. Um, here's your known morphs according to uh, the list in your known morph section. Um, and what it's gonna do is it's gonna say, okay. Based on your known morphs versus all this information right here, you have 85% comprehension of everything on Netflix, or 40%, or 90%, right? And it's going to tell you, if you add 500 morphs, if you add 1,000 morphs, how much this is going to go up, right? And of course, the more words you learn, the more dis diminishing returns there's going to be. It's just how it works, right? 
Um, so studying the Netflix frequency list is a great idea if you are like at 4,000, maybe 5,000 morphs or less. Um, but after that, you're gonna start getting really bad diminishing returns and maybe you should move on to a specific show. Um, yeah. <laughs> so as you guys can see over here, um, I've been studying a frequency list specifically to do with Umaro-chan. Um, I were, um, a lot of people recently have been calling this a deep dive. Um, and so this is the first show that I've deep dived into, right? So, you know, I did um, the Tango books and uh, five and four and then three. And then uh, I studied with um, using Morph Man and the Netflix frequency list and just using whatever random animes that I wanted. And now I'm specifically using uh, Umaro-chan because I kind of got up to 4,500 morphs and I was like, yeah, it's time to like study something more specifically. And as you can see, the returns are a lot, lot greater. Um, so right now in a march on of the 4,000 morphs, I know only 1,600 are showing up, almost 1,700, but I'm getting 90.6% comprehension, right? And if I add another uh, 500 morphs, that's gonna get me up to 96% comprehension, which is basically when you're at the point where you're gonna run into a word you don't know here and there, and you'll probably be able to figure out what it means from context, um, or you don't need that word <laughs> because it's only going to show up once or twice in the entire show. Um, and for me personally, this has been a really, really good experience. Um, I can talk about that in another video if you guys would like to see a video about deep diving. Um, I will probably make one once I hit like 96% comprehension in this show. Anyways, so put your known morphs in, right? Um, and it's gonna generate a, generate a priority list for everything that's in here. So if I went to a Marochan, what I could do is be like, okay, cool. I'm gonna go ahead and grab, you know, everything that has, shows up at least two times in the show, right? Which is, boom, uh, 201 words. I would take all of those, I'd copy it into a text document, and then um, I would load it into Morphman. And the way you would do that is you would just go over to Morphman, you go right back into the um, manager, you would uh, click on Japanese, and then you'd hit extract morph memes from file, and um, you would just go ahead and select a file, right? So you could click this text.frequency, right? Um, which is one that I created for something else. Um, but basically you would select that file that just has all the words in it that you would need to know, and then you would click open. I'll just do it with this real quick. Click open, it's gonna say great, and then you're gonna save it as a database. And then what you wanna do is you wanna save this database as priority. Um, as you can see, I have one right here already. Um, so if I save this, it would just replace it, so I'm not gonna do that, but that's how you save a priority list. It's pretty easy. Um, make sure that you select Japanese, right? Cool. And then from there, uh, why don't I show you guys real quick how I've been doing uh, my mining. So first thing you need to do is just, um, I have a bunch of shows loaded into uh, my Substrate Star Bank. Like I have the first season of Pokemon no Hero. I have like all of Full Metal Alchemist. I have um, probably 20, 20 episodes of Pokemon Sun and Moon. I have like all of Toradora. I obviously have all of Marochan. Um, yeah, and so what I've been doing while I deep dive though is I really just want to try to get um, cards from Umarotan, but sometimes that doesn't work out. Sometimes you just gotta get cards from um, different shows because like maybe that word only shows up in Umarotan three times and none of those are I plus one sentences for you, right? So, cool. We'll go ahead and load this up. Alright, let's go ahead and take a look at my first card here. Um, so, basically, Morphan's gonna suggest you a card, right? And that, that card is gonna be based off your priority list. It's gonna try to find you an I plus one sentence. Um, you should have a lot of them as long as you've loaded up a frequency list and you've loaded up a large sentence bake. Whether that sentence bake is just from one show or it's from a lot of different shows, that's up to you. I personally use a lot of different shows. Um, most of my cards right now I'm trying to specifically get from Amarachan because that's the show that I'm deep diving. Um, and yeah, so here we got a card, right? Um, and it's uh, one from Toradora, I believe, and I really don't want a card from Toradora, and maybe I don't even like this card. So you don't have to use the card that Morphman suggests. Um, you can kind of work your way around this, right? So let me bring up my browser real quick, and then I'll just throw in Focus, right? And then this is the Focus Morph, right? So if you've set your Morphman and your cards up the way that Mad First Japan suggests, um, you should have a Focus column right here. So if you just copy that, type in Focus, and type in that word, you should be able to find uh, a bunch of cards, right? So here we got three, um, and it looks like two of them are from Amarachan. They're pretty much the same card, right? Uh, it's literally, you know, one after another. And it looks like, uh, ch -ch -ch -ch. yep, so both these cards would be perfectly fine. Um, so TSF-san wa matcha 
Um, so this one's great. So basically, all you would need to do then is change the order of this card, right? You can see right now that the due date, the due on this card is like 10,000 something. So if you just hit Control S, or if you go up I think, to the edit um, or whatever, and just make your start position, just make it number one, right? Boom, it's gonna move it to the top of my list, and then it's gonna give me this card, right? So now once I go back to my browser, great, there's the card. So. TSF-san, matcha ga tsuki no no. Right? So then you're just gonna take that word and you're gonna throw it into your dictionary of choice, whether that's gonna be Jisho, whether it's gonna be Weblio, um, or whether you're using Colbury, that's completely up to you. If you want a J2J -J definition, Weblio is great, right? Um, and it's pretty quick. Uh, and if you want to use an English definition, that's fine too. Just throw it into Jisho, um, great dictionary, right? And there you go, matcha. And from there, uh, the rest is up to you, right? So if you're using J to J definitions, maybe you just want to put the J to J definition into your meaning field. Um, or if you're using like a notes field, you can put it there too. Um, or if you're using an English definition and you just want to put the single word you don't know, you can put it there. Or if you want to put a definition for the entire sentence, um, you can put that there as well. Personally, um, if I'm doing an English definition, then I uh, will either put the single word or if there's something about the sentence that I liked grammatically, then I will put the, uh, the definition of the entire sentence there, right? Because I'm trying to learn more of a grammatical structure than a single word like matcha. I know matcha, so I drink matcha on a daily basis. Not a daily basis, I've drank matcha a lot in my life. How about that? Um, so in this case, you know, I could just write it out and be like, you know, TSF, um, do you like matcha? You know, and then from there you can do whatever you want. Maybe you want to underline that word. That's up to you. Cool. And then just close. And then it should be good to go. And then I just have mine set up so that uh, you have to hover over the definition um, to be able to see it like that. Pretty cool. And then, yeah. And then from there, I'll find my next word, you know. So jump, right, is my next word. Throw it in my dictionary if I want it from there. Um, go to my browser. Maybe I don't want a card from that. Maybe I don't want it from Omarachan if I can find one. Although, yeah, that's pretty good too. Uh, cool. So, like today, jumps on sale. Um, cool. And then I would just take this card and once again just move its position. There you go. And there. Cool. Jump no hatsubai visa na. Chan. Cool. Today, jumps on sale. There you go. Cool. All right, guys. Um, yeah, that's pretty much gonna be it for today. That's how I've been making sentence cards. Um, I'm still keeping at a pace of 15 cards a day. That really hasn't changed. Um, or 15 words a day that really hasn't changed my entire like Japanese learning um, experience to begin with. Like I did that for Tango, I did 15 words a day, which equaled up to be 30 cards. And for this, I'm only doing reading cards. I'm not doing audio cards anymore. Um, especially with Umarachan, it's making a lot of sense because I'm watching the show pretty regularly. So I'm getting a lot of immersion from specifically what I'm mining, which helps a lot. I really can't suggest that enough. Um, anyways, guys, if you have any questions, go ahead and put them down below. If you have any comments, cool. If you got any hate, keep it to yourself. <laughs> yeah. And uh, if you like the video, please like the video. And if you want to see more content like this, go ahead and subscribe. And if you have a suggestion for another video, something that's really been bugging you or something you would want to see, then go ahead and ask and maybe um, I or somebody else will be able to do it. Anyways, guys, later.